All right, the topic is the millennial reign of Christ. Let's take a listen. According to the scriptures, Jesus is going to come again, and he's going to dwell upon the earth for a thousand years. That, he, now, now, that's not, that's not in the scripture at all. He's going to reign over the earth during this time, and he will set his throne in Jerusalem. And Judah, okay. the area of okay. Judah will be his... his portion, right, gotcha. Okay, okay so, he says that he will set his throne in Jerusalem. He's going to reign over the earth during this time, and he will set his throne in Jerusalem. And he will. Yeah, I love the way this guy talks, man. Can you imagine if I could talk like that? And he will set his throne. And earth during this time, and he will set his throne in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Wow, that guy talks smooth, man. Real good. Appreciate that, but he's wrong. That's all. He's wrong because. I want to show you something, all right? Don't lose fact of what he's saying. Over the earth during this time, and he will set his throne in Jerusalem. Well, you might be wondering, what's wrong with that? Well, the way he's presenting it is what's wrong. He's presenting it as the Jerusalem that's here on earth right now, okay? So, you think of uh, Jerusalem as the holy city, right? So, first of all, let's do it this way. All right. In Matthew 6, verse 21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Think about that. Where is your treasure? Where is your heart? Now, let's go to... Uh, I forget what was it uh, first uh, Galatians I think I can't remember nothing let's take a look here I'll find it oh, yeah no geez good night I thought it was Galatians I really did now it's Galatians 4 but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem is the holy city of God. Where is your treasure? Is it above in the holy city of God, which is the new Jerusalem, which is going to come down from heaven? Jesus says he goes and prepares a place for us. That place is the new city, the city of God. He, and it's going to come down out of heaven onto the earth. Is that where your treasure is? Because if that's where your treasure is, there so also is where your heart is. So think about this. Is your treasure on earth down below or is it above in heaven where the new city Jerusalem is? You can think of two cities with the same name. One is everlasting and the other one is hell. All right? Where is your heart? Are you a natural man, an earthly man, or are you a spiritual man from above? That's a, really, a, in my opinion, this is how you should be looking at this. So when Jesus comes back, he's not going to come back and stand on a place that is already here, that essentially men have prepared for him, because it's nothing but filth. Jesus goes and prepares a place for us in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for 
you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, I guarantee this is true. You cannot teach anything that is contrary to this. If you do, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. So you're absolutely wrong to say Jesus is going to come back and with nothing and set his foot on the Jerusalem that is there today. A filthy, dirty place. And not bring the holy city of God like every... I mean, come on, man. But that's what they're teaching. They... It, they have to willingly be ignoring all the verses in the Bible that talks about this very thing. That Jesus has prepared a place for us in Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven, a new earth. And the first earth and were passed away. The first heaven, first earth passed away and there was no more sea. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So, I mean, you have to be willingly ignorant. And these guys, this is the mainstream teaching. This idea that Jesus is going to come down and set his foot on the earthly Jerusalem today. Forget about that heavenly Jerusalem. You don't need it. Right? I mean, come on, man. Really? That's what that's what this guy's talking about. Reign over the earth during this time, and he will set his throne in Jerusalem. And Judah, the area of Judah, will be his portion. I don't know what he's talking about there. Is he talking about um, his portion will be um, the Judaizers? I, I don't know. And it says the kings of the earth will come annually and present their gifts unto him. Okay, so I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, the kings of the earth will come to the earthly Jerusalem and present their gifts. I mean, what he's describing there sounds a lot like, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, I, yeah, Solomon had, uh, you know, the kings of the earth would come to him and offer gifts but I don't know what he's talking about in relation to a future event I, I just don't know I don't know and he will be the Lord over the earth at that time and the peoples of the world will worship him now in that glorious kingdom age yeah so think about this what you got unsaved people in, during this glorious kingdom age uh, really that there's a big problem with this all right and that's a that's a really big deal all right so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven is that the end of the world this is very important okay so Jesus is asked specifically what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Yeah, don't take that lightly. I, I think people are ignoring that. Because the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven. That's the end of the world. The end of the world. I had somebody try to tell me that, oh, it's not the end of the world. It's the end of the age. you got to be sh kidding me. Really. And it's the same thing in Mark 13, Luke 21. Very same thing. Very same conversation. Very same descriptions. Very same end of the world. Very same. And then you can go to uh, Matthew 13. Same thing. The end of the world. The harvest is the end of the world. And it's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and separates the saved from the unsaved it's the end of the world this Hollywood idea of a millennial age of whatever I don't know what's going on you you notice because I've done this 
dozens of times. I've showed clips of various people and they all teach the same thing but they never talk about what happens. What's going on? Are people having sex? Are there unsaved people? If they're unsaved people, there are people having sex. You got people that are saved during this time, living with people that are unsaved during this time. Now think about it. If Jesus is standing in Jerusalem, he's already come in the clouds of heaven. And it's not the end of the world. Comprehende, amigo? If he's standing on earth in Jerusalem, then that means he's already come in the clouds of heaven and it's already the end of the world. Comprehende, amigo? We will be here to live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Okay, <laughs> then the other part is, all right, so who takes over when Jesus is done reigning? I mean, come on, man. That's They never talk about that. If he only reigns for a thousand years, then he's not reigning now. He's going to reign after he comes, and it's only going to be four thousand years. Who's, who's reigning now, and who's going to reign after? Is it you, Mochumbo? In fact, in the book of Revelation, it says, Unto him who has loved us and washed us with his blood, and who hath made us kings and priests unto God. And then in the fifth chapter of the Revelation, when we are singing praises unto the Lamb for his worthiness to take the scroll and loose the seals because he was slain and has redeemed us by his blood, and the song goes on to say, And we shall reign with him, and has made us kings and priests unto our God, and we shall reign with him upon the earth. Yeah, right now, we reign with Christ. Right now, we are kings and priests. Right now. Right now. Right now. We are called to be to preach the gospel to every creature. Right now. We are preachers. We are a priesthood. We are a royal priesthood. We are kings and priests unto God. That's important. So when you read of the kings of the earth coming and presenting their gifts unto the Lord in the kingdom age, that's okay. you. Yeah, hey, that's right. That is you. Okay, so yeah, I could make a, I could make this longer and, and get into what Paul talks about, but that it's talking about annually. We'll have a great tour to Jerusalem. What? As we gather together from all over the world, I'll come from Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sitting on the beach, soaking up the sun. Oh, Lord, well, things are going pretty well there on Maui, Lord. We got sipping things under control. Can you services. <laughs> Fondling the waitresses. <laughs> Keep the surf up. Paradise. But the kings of the earth gathering in, oh, what, how glorious that's going to be when the Lord reigns over the earth and yeah. righteousness covers Soaking the, up the earth. Sun, fondling the, the waters. waters cover the sea. You know, if you miss that, you miss the whole reason for living. What, fondling you waitresses? You miss the whole purpose of life. Sipping the pina coladas? The purpose of your being here is that you might come to know Jesus Christ now as your Lord and as your King. In order that loving Him, living for Alright, yeah, so I appreciate that. I do appreciate the, the attempt at humor, but I, I want to uh, end on this note that we are a royal priest, so we are kings and priests unto God. Alright, so let's go to Revelation 20. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them. That's talking about us, kings and priests unto God. We are the royal priesthood. We are the ones that he sees on thrones, sitting on the thrones. We are the kings and priests unto God. The judgment was already given to us when we were born of the Spirit of God. We are cleansed from all unrighteousness forever and ever. Judgment has already been given to us. 
right and we are because Jesus lives in us and we live in him that's final that's a final finality it's forever we are sealed secured sanctified forever and I saw thrones let's talk about us what do you what do you envision now I haven't seen the movie left behind you know Kirk Cameron and and all those guys that make those movies I haven't seen it so I don't know what they're teaching I really don't but it's very plain to me Revelation 20 verse 4 and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them talking about us judgment was given to us right now we are born of the Spirit of God and I saw souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the Word of God right so this you know this was happening you know this happened to John right he had his head cut off and so we might expect that sort of thing to continue until Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all right now the worshiping the beast if you don't believe in God and you're if you're not born of the Spirit of God then by default you worship the beast and his image and you've you uh, received his mark upon your forehead and your thoughts in in your work um, you receive the beast uh, which is the government you're putting all your hope and faith and trust in the government system all right and and not in God all right, that's just inherent that's just by default all right if you're not trusting in God you're trusting in man all right and you're coming up on the the bad end of that deal I guarantee it if you don't change right away now right now we live and reign with Christ during this very unique time period all right so you think about what was it like before Jesus came and what what was going on is that there was one group of people all right there was the 12 tribes of Israel the children of Israel was the children of God and God watched over them and they were of one people and then outside of that group of people were the nations deceived by Satan now here comes Jesus and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes and now Satan is bound and can no longer deceive the nations like he did before okay and then when he is loosed is when we are up in the air with the Lord Jesus just like it says in Matthew 24 uh, Mark 13 Luke 21 uh, was it first Thessalonians 4 it just everywhere in the Bible all right everywhere it talks about how we will be lifted up in the air we will gather together to the Lord Jesus up in the air and then that's when Satan is loosed to deceive the nations to gather them t together and to compass the camp of the Saints about the difference this is what was going on before and this is what's gonna happen at the end of the thousand years the difference is at the end of the thousand years we will be up in the air with the Lord all right, and then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. This goes back to Genesis 3, verse 15, when God says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thou, thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Right? So, um, I mean, that's it right there. It's, it's as simple as it gets, but I just wanted to 
sort of highlight another video of somebody talking about this idea that you don't reign with Christ right now. If you're not sitting in Hawaii fondling women and sipping pina coladas, you're missing out, man. You're missing out. I'm telling you, don't listen to these guys. They sound great. They talk great. They're great speakers. And they got all, you know, that flow. They, they almost sing when they talk. And me, I stutter half the time. But that doesn't change the truth. That doesn't alter the truth. The fact of the matter is, we are kings and priests unto God. Right now, we reign with Christ right now.